Alright, how's it going? So, this is the final part, part three, of the Flesh Garden series. Uh, if you missed the first two, they'll be in the description. I'll keep this very short and sweet. Um, at the end will be commentary. I am gonna put my homie's music in it this time, I didn't before, oops. And then the other thing that I'm gonna say in all these videos is that the the images, the video that you see, is just a representation. Uh, you're gonna see things that don't exactly add up. Again, just a representation, just to give you the feeling, the vibe. Uh, one thing I'll say is that Dolly 3 has a problem uh, doing Tyranids. Pretty much just shows them as Xenomorphs. So, get ready to see a lot of Xenomorphs. Again, they're just there to represent, okay? Don't hate me. And I think that's about it. Um, if you enjoy this, which I hope you do, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And again, I hope you guys enjoy The Flesh Garden Part 3. Thank you. Chapter 7 The Impending Storm in the eerie silence atop the crumbling parapet of Viridius Prime, Guardsman Lysandra stands, her hazel eyes scanning the horizon. The sky, a canvas of bleak greys, reflects the sombre mood of the 113th Caledon Rangers. Corporal Jackson, his face etched with lines of unspoken fears, stands beside her, his gaze equally distant. Lorne, once a beacon of youthful energy, now mirrors the desolation around them. The air is thick with anticipation, a silent prelude to the storm that is to come. As Guardsman Lysandra looks out, the stillness is deceptive, a momentary respite in the relentless horror of war. Do you see it, Jackson? Lysandra's voice is a hollow whisper, barely audible over the gentle whistle of the wind. Jackson, turning towards her, nods slowly. It's like the world is holding its breath, Lysandra, waiting for the end to begin. In the distance, the horizon shifts, transforming into a horrifying spectacle. The Tyranid horde appears, a monstrous tide of chitin and flesh. Their silhouettes paint a nightmarish scene against the darkening sky, a grotesque tapestry that turns day into a chilling eclipse. Lysandra's narration, internal and fraught with despair, echoes in her mind. We'll stand at the brink, witnessing the final act of this tragedy. This world, once vibrant and full of life, now reduced to a playground for monstrosities. Corporal Jackson, his stoicism beginning to crack, looks back at the remaining members of their squad. Naira, clutching her wounded torso, tries to mask her pain with a brave smile. Vega, his arm bandaged, leans against the trench wall, his usual bravado dimmed by the visible strain. We've lost so much. Naira murmurs, her voice a fragile thread. Tira, Harlan, Ren, and now this. Vega's response is a low, bitter chuckle. What's left for us, huh? Fighting till we're part of this damn planet's grotesque scenery. Lysandra's gaze returns to the horizon. The Tyranid swarm advances an unstoppable force of nature. Their alien cries a discordant symphony of doom. The sight is overwhelming, a visceral reminder of their impending doom. Lorne, standing a little apart, his youthful face now marred by the scars of war, speaks up, his voice unsteady. Do you think there's any hope for us, Sergeant? Lysandra turns to him, her eyes reflecting a depth of sorrow. Hope is a luxury on the battlefield, Lorne. But we fight not for hope, but for each other for the memories of those who have fallen. As the sky darkens further, the oppressive atmosphere of Viridius Prime grows heavier. Lysandra feels a profound sadness envelop her, a mourning for the world they knew, for the lives they once had. The transformation of the planet into a Tyranid hive, the subtle corruption of its very essence, mirrors the transformation within each of them. No longer just soldiers, they are remnants of humanity, fighting a losing battle against an enemy that is both outside and within. In this moment of quiet despair, Lysandra's thoughts turn inward. She recalls her early days on Viridius Prime, the naive belief in victory and glory. Now, all that remains is the grim reality of their situation, a war that has consumed their world, their lives, and their very being. Guardsman Lysandra's gaze fixed on the advancing horde, her expression a mix of resignation and quiet defiance. Around her, the remaining members of her squad prepare for the inevitable each lost in their own thoughts of dread and sorrow. The haunting image of the Tyranid Swarm, a relentless force of nature, encapsulates the grim reality of their fate. 
Viridius Prime, once a symbol of imperial might, now stands on the brink of annihilation, its defenders facing a foe that is as much a part of the planet as they are. In the growing darkness, Guardsman Lysandra's voice is barely a whisper, a solemn testament to their plight. This is our reality now. A world transformed, a battlefield warped. We stand at the edge of despair, fighting not just for survival, but for the remnants of our humanity. Guardsman Lysandra, sergeant of the 113th Caledon Rangers, stands atop a battered parapet, overlooking the trenches of Viridius Prime. Her hazel eyes, once vibrant with determination, now flicker with a somber weariness. The acrid stench of burning flesh fills the air, a grim reminder of the relentless war against the Tyranid Swarm. To your positions. Lysandra commands, her voice a blend of authority and resignation. Her squad battered yet resolute takes their places along the trench line. The sky above roars with the arrival of Imperial bombers, casting ominous shadows across the scarred battlefield. Their engines scream a death knell as firebombs rain down upon the no-man's land, where Imperial soldiers and Tyranids clash in a maelstrom of violence. Sergeant Lysandra's fingers tighten around her laser gun as a crackling voice erupts from the Voxcaster, breaking the eerie calm that had settled over her section of the trench. Alpha and Delta companies prepare for countercharge on my mark. The voice, stern and resolute, belongs to Captain Argus, known for his valiant yet often reckless strategies. Lysandra's squad exchanges glances, a silent understanding passing between them. They are to hold their position, a bulwark against the tide while their comrades prepare to surge into the abyss. Three, two, one, charge. Captain Argus's command echoes through the Vox, a clarion call to war. In an instant, the distant trenches erupt in a frenzied blur of movement. Thousands of Imperial soldiers, a sea of blue and grey, surge forward with a chorus of battle cries, their determination palpable even from Lysandra's distant vantage point. The ground trembles under the weight of their charge, a human wave crashing against the alien shore. The air fills with the sounds of gunfire, chain swords, and the primal roars of the Tyrannic swarm. Lysandra watches, her heart in her throat as the first line of soldiers collides with the Tyranid front. The clash is brutal, immediate, and horrific. The Tyranids, a grotesque amalgamation of chitin and sinew, meet the soldiers with a ferocity that is otherworldly. The battle turns into a slaughter, within moments. The Tyranids, unyielding and insatiable, tear through the Imperial ranks with terrifying efficiency. Limbs and bodies are flung into the air, torn asunder by the relentless onslaught. The sky, darkened by the smoke of bombardment, roars as Imperial bombers unleash their payload onto the battlefield. Fire and brimstone rain down, engulfing both human and Tyranid alike. The ground becomes an inferno, a Dantean landscape of unending torment. Lysandra's eyes widen in horror as she witnesses scenes that sear themselves into her memory. Soldiers, her comrades aflame, stagger back towards the trenches, their screams rending the air. Some fall and are trampled underfoot by their own retreating comrades. Others reach the trench only to collapse, their bodies charred beyond recognition. The air is thick with the stench of burning flesh, a nauseating miasma that blankets the battlefield. The Tyranids, undeterred by the flames, continue their advance, their alien forms silhouetted against the firestorm, a nightmarish tableau of death and destruction. Lysandra's squad stands frozen, witnessing the annihilation. Trooper Mira, her face pale, murmurs a prayer to the Emperor, her voice a whisper lost in the cacophony of war. Keep your focus. Lysandra manages, her voice a strained whisper. We hold the line, no matter what. But the words sound hollow, even to her. The countercharge, meant to be a display of Imperial might, has devolved into a ghastly spectacle of despair. The bravery and sacrifice of thousands, reduced to mere footnotes in the endless saga of this war. As the bombardment ceases, leaving behind a charred wasteland littered with the dead and dying, Lysandra knows that this was more than a military defeat. It was a testament to the futility of their struggle against a relentless, unfeeling enemy. In the trenches, surrounded by the remnants of their once proud force, Lysandra and her squad brace for the Tyranids' continued assault, their spirits shattered, their hearts heavy with a loss that is both deeply personal and overwhelmingly vast. In the smouldering aftermath of the bombardment, Sergeant Lysandra's eyes sweep across the wasteland, where the Tyranids, like an unstoppable force of nature, begin their terrifying counterattack. The ground beneath her feet vibrates with the approach of the alien swarm, 
a menacing rumble that heralds an onslaught beyond any human comprehension. Brace yourselves. Lysandra's voice is a calm amidst the storm, her eyes locking onto the advancing horde. This is the moment we stand firm. The sky darkens ominously as winged tyranid leviathans, monstrous creatures with grotesque, chitinous bodies and leathery wings, descend from the clouds. Their screeches, piercing and alien, drown out the sounds of gunfire and explosions, instilling a primal fear in the hearts of the soldiers. Corporal Jackson, his face a mask of terror and awe, shouts over the chaos. Incoming from above, get to cover! Plysandra, her heart pounding in her chest, watches as the leviathans swoop down, their massive talons extended like the fingers of death itself. They snatch Imperial soldiers from the ground, lifting them into the air amidst screams of terror and despair. The Emperor protect us, whispers Trooper Mira, her eyes wide with fear. Lysandra, gripping her weapon tightly, aims and fires at a diving leviathan. Her bullets ping harmlessly off its thick hide, a futile gesture against such a formidable foe. The sky becomes a chaotic battlefield, with Imperial aircraft desperately engaging the aerial nightmares. Explosions bloom in the air, a futile attempt to stem the tide of the Tyranid advance. On the ground, the Tyranid's hulking warriors charge forward. Their alien forms a blur of chitin and fangs. Lysandra realizes with a sinking heart that this battle has escalated beyond their worst fears. Squad, focus fire. Target the joints. She commands, firing round after round into the advancing swarm. Trooper Naira, wounded across her torso, grimaces in pain but continues to fire her weapon with unyielding determination. Beside her, Trooper Vega, his arm bandaged and bloodied, unleashes a barrage of gunfire, his face etched with a mix of rage and fear. The trench is filled with the cacophony of war, the air thick with the stench of blood and ichor. The soldiers' faces are smeared with dirt and sweat, their expressions a mixture of determination and despair. Lysandra, leading her squad with a ferocity born of desperation, cuts down Tyranid after Tyranid. Her chain's word whirs through the air, slicing through alien flesh with every swing. Push them back! She yells, her voice barely audible over the roar of battle. But for every Tyranid they fell, two more take its place, a relentless wave of death that seems to have no end. Lysandra, standing amidst the bodies of fallen comrades and enemies alike, gazes out over the battlefield, her face, illuminated by the flickering flames of the ruined landscape, is a mask of resolve and sorrow. We endure. She whispers to herself, a mantra against the overwhelming sense of doom. For the Emperor, we endure. In the trenches of Viridius Prime, guardsman Lysandra stands, her heart pounding in her chest. The air reeks of blood and ichor, a pungent reminder of the unending war against the Tyranids. Lysandra's hazel eyes, once filled with a spark of hope, now reflect only the grim resolve of a soldier who has seen too much. Beside her, Medic Ilara, her face etched with concentration and fear, transforms her medkit into a makeshift shield. Her pistol, usually a last resort, now barks in steady rhythm, cutting down the advancing Tyranid horrors. With swift movements, Ilara switches between firing and administering aid to a wounded trooper, her hands steady despite the chaos. Engineer Vox, covered in grime and blood, works feverishly to create makeshift barriers against the swarm. His gadgets, a blend of imperial ingenuity and desperation, explode amidst the Tyranid drones, buying precious moments for the beleaguered defenders. Keep firing, hold the line! Lysandra yells over the din of battle, her voice a beacon of command amidst despair. Her bolter roars a rhythmic thunder against the alien screech. A Tyranid beast, all teeth and claws, lunges at her. In a display of lethal grace, Lysandra sidesteps, her combat knife plunging into its underbelly. She withdraws the blade just in time to unload a barrage of gunfire into another encroaching monstrosity. The trench, once a symbol of imperial defiance, has transformed into a gruesome tableau of death. Blood and alien ichor mix in a grotesque dance painting the muddy ground in shades of red and black. But the onslaught does not relent, as Lysandra, Ilara and Vox battle with unyielding ferocity, the once steadfast imperial line begins to falter. The trenches, those narrow corridors of mud and blood, become a labyrinthine nightmare. Guardsman Lysandra, her senses heightened in the midst of chaos, suddenly hears a different kind of scream, one that chills her to the bone. She turns just in time to see Trooper Vega, previously injured but unyielding, now caught in the deadly grasp of a Tyranid warrior. This behemoth, a grotesque fusion of chitin and sinew, towers over the battlefield, 
its scything claws glistening with the blood of fallen comrades. Trooper Vega, a soldier as fierce as he is loyal, fights back with a primal ferocity, his laser gun blazing until it clicks empty, but his bravery stands little chance against the monstrous Tyranid. In a moment that seems to stretch into eternity, the Tyranid warrior lifts Vega off the ground. The soldier's struggles only seem to intrigue the creature, its alien eyes gleaming with a predatory interest. With a sudden, horrific movement, the Tyranid's massive claw impales Vega, lifting him high for a brief, excruciating moment as if displaying a trophy. Lysandra, her heart pounding in horror and rage, fires at the beast, but her bullets merely chip off pieces of its thick carapace. Around her, the din of battle continues, but in that moment her focus narrows to the sight of her comrade in the clutches of the enemy. Vega, impaled and bleeding profusely, locks eyes with Lysandra. His gaze, a mix of pain and silent farewell, sears into her memory, a haunting, wordless goodbye. Then, with a grotesque sound of tearing flesh, the Tyranid warrior rends Vega apart. His upper body falls to the ground with a sickening thud, while the creature callously discards the lower half. The trench, already a macabre scene of death, now witnesses a new level of horror. Vega's remains, once a symbol of human defiance, lie in a twisted heap, a gruesome testament to the Tyranid's merciless nature. Lysandra, her face smeared with the blood and dirt of war, feels a surge of despair. Vega's death, brutal and senseless, epitomizes the futility of their struggle. Lysandra's gaze falls upon a group of soldiers, cornered by a Tyranid ravener. The beast's scything talons descend in a macabre dance of death. Gunfire does little to halt its relentless slaughter. The trenches have become a gallery of horror. Bodies of Imperial soldiers, some still twitching in death's embrace, others mutilated beyond recognition. The walls, once a storeroom of ammunition and hope, now display the grisly remains of the fallen. In this charnel pit, Lysandra realizes the grim truth. This is no longer a battlefield. It is a slaughterhouse for the Tyranid Hive. Each moment, a struggle for survival against an enemy devoid of mercy or fear. A sense of despair settles in Lysandra's heart, a stone weighing down her soul. This war, this endless struggle against the Tyranids has become a desperate fight for survival. As Lysandra fires her bolter, each shot a defiance against the inevitable. She knows this truth. They are not soldiers fighting a war, they are prey fighting for their very existence in the grotesque garden of the Tyranids. The trenches of Viridius Prime, a once lush world now a grotesque labyrinth of mud, metal and alien monstrosities, offer no sanctuary. Sergeant Lysandra, her senses sharpened by years of brutal conflict, watches as the Tyranid swarm engulfs the horizon. The sky, choked with spores, casts a pall over the trench network, a network now more akin to open graves than strategic defences. Amidst the stench of death and decay, an unspeakable transformation unfolds. Trooper Silas, once a steadfast member of Sergeant Lysandra's squad, now writhes on the muddy ground, his body undergoing a grotesque metamorphosis under the Tyranid's sinister influence. Sergeant Lysandra, her eyes wide with a mix of horror and disbelief, watches as Trooper Silas's limbs contort unnaturally, elongating and twisting into something alien. His skin ripples, taking on a chitinous sheen, as if his very flesh rebels against its human origins. Emperor, preserve us. Trooper Mira whispers, her voice barely audible over the sounds of distant artillery. Sergeant Lysandra's gaze remains fixed on the horrific spectacle. She orders, her voice steady despite the growing dread in her heart. Trooper Silas's screams morph into guttural otherworldly hisses, a haunting chorus that chills the soul. The transformation isn't immediate, but insidious, a creeping corruption that distorts his humanity bit by bit. Engineer Vox, his usual humor extinguished by the grotesque scene, clutches his demolition charges, his hands trembling. Sarge, what are we going to do? We do what we must. Sergeant Lysandra replies, her hand gripping the hilt of her power sword. We can't let him suffer like this. As the transformed trooper Silas staggers to his feet, his movements betray an eerie, serpentine grace. His once familiar face is now a nightmarish visage, a mockery of the soldier he once was. Sergeant Lysandra steps forward, her chainsword revving, casting an ominous glint in the dim trench. Silas, forgive us. She murmurs, a prayer lost in the cacophony of war. The battle that ensues is a tragic dance of former comrades. Trooper Silas, or the creature he has become, lunges with unnatural speed, his new tyranid appendages slicing through the air. Sergeant Lysandra parries and counters, 
each movement a blend of precision and sorrow. Trooper Mira and Engineer Vox provide covering fire, their shots strategically aimed to hinder the creature's advance. The confined space of the trench amplifies the brutality of the confrontation, each clash echoing off the mud-soaked walls. And this isn't you, Silas. Sergeant Lysandra shouts over the din of combat, her blade clashing against the chitinous armor of the transformed trooper. You're one of us, not this, this abomination. But the creature that was once Trooper Silas shows no sign of recognition. Its actions driven by the Tyranid's hive mind. Its alien shrieks fill the trench, a sound that embodies the horror of their reality. The fight is a desperate struggle, a battle not just for survival, but for the memory of the man Trooper Silas once was. With each passing moment, the remnants of his humanity slip further away, consumed by the Tyranid corruption. In a final heartbreaking moment, Sergeant Lysandra finds an opening. A chainsword arcs through the air. A flash of light in the darkness and finds its mark. The creature that was once Trooper Silas falls, its body collapsing into the mud with a haunting finality. As they regroup, the squad barely has a moment to process the horror of their actions. The trench remains a maelstrom of death and destruction, the war showing no signs of respite. We did what we had to. Sergeant Lysandra says, her voice cutting through the chaos. Remember, in this war our choices are grim necessities. The squad presses on, their faces etched with the scars of battle and loss. The memory of Trooper Silas's fall serves as a grim reminder of their own vulnerability in this relentless conflict. The Tyranid Swarm, a grotesque tide of chitin and fangs, surges forward, an unstoppable force of alien brutality. Sergeant Lysandra's heart pounds fiercely in her chest, each beat a drum of war in this nightmarish symphony. Her eyes, sharp and focused, scan the battlefield, a hellish landscape wrought by the Tyranid onslaught. The air, thick with the stench of death and burning flesh, clings to her lungs, a tangible reminder of the war's grotesque reality. Fall back, regroup at Rally Point Delta. Sergeant Lysandra's voice cuts through the cacophony, a beacon amidst the chaos. Her squad, battered and diminished, responds with a mix of desperation and resolve. They move, a cohesive unit in retreat, through the labyrinth of trenches. The ground trembles beneath them, the Tyranids relentless in their pursuit. The sudden roar of engines overhead heralds an unforeseen reprieve. Imperial aircraft, their hulls emblazoned with the proud insignia of the guard, descend like avenging angels. Their arrival, a blend of hope and terror, signals a turning tide. Explosions blossom across the battlefield, a rain of fire and fury from the skies. The Tyranids falter, their swarm momentarily broken by the aerial onslaught. Sergeant Lysandra watches, her heart a mix of horror and awe, as the Imperial might carves a temporary safe zone amidst the alien horde. Her squad seizing the opportunity, regroups. They tend to their wounds, each bandage and balm a silent testament to their survival. The air, now thick with the scent of burning Tyranid flesh, offers a macabre relief from the relentless assault. As the aircraft retreat, a haunting silence descends. The Tyranids, though reduced, begin to regroup, their hive mind adapting to the new threat. Sergeant Lysandra, her resolve unwavering, leads her squad through the trenches. Their retreat is strategic, a maneuver to regather and reassess. Yet each step weighs heavy with the knowledge that the war is far from over. Emerging from the debris, Sergeant Lysandra surveys the aftermath. The battlefield, a scorched wasteland, echoes with the cries of the wounded and dying. The ground, littered with the remnants of both friend and foe, tells a tale of brutal conflict and grim survival. In the solitude of her quarters, Sergeant Lysandra reflects on the battle. Her journal, a chronicle of war's grim reality, receives her thoughts, a blend of sorrow, exhaustion, and unyielding determination. The cost of their survival etched in the lines of her face and the scars on her skin is a burden she carries with an unwavering sense of duty. Her gaze drifts to the mirror, her reflection a stark reminder of the transformation within. The subtle changes, a product of prolonged exposure to the Tyranid altered environment, are both physical and psychological. Her eyes, once a vivid hazel, now carry a depth that speaks of her evolving connection to the enemy she battles. In the shadowed trenches of Viridius Prime, Guardsman Lysandra stands, her armor a testament to battles endured. The azure sky, now cloaked in a pallid shroud of spores, whispers of the world's transformation. The horizon, once a familiar landmark, 
stretches as a desolate tableau of war's ruin. Lysandra's gaze, sharpened by years of conflict, notices the subtle alterations around her. The trenches, symbols of imperial resilience, now betray an alien influence. The earth underfoot feels alive, infused with an otherworldly essence shifting in color to an unnatural hue. Tiny fungal growths, mimicking the tyranid bioforms, emerge from the trench walls, blurring into the backdrop of war's desolation. A sense of foreboding takes root in Lysandra's heart. The air around her, charged with latent energy, carries the faint hum of the Tyranid Hive, a dissonant melody that speaks to the planet's gradual assimilation. It's a change not just in the world but within herself. Unbeknownst to Lysandra, faint patterns begin to etch into her skin, echoing the Tyranid bioforms surrounding her. Her senses, already honed by war, sharpen further, attuning to the eerie symphony of the changing world. Something's not right. Lysandra mutters, her voice barely a whisper against the howling winds. She turns to Trooper Mira, the youngest of her squad, who lies beside her, clutching a wound across her torso. Everything's changed, Sergeant. Mira gasps, her eyes wide with pain and fear. It's like the planet. It's alive. Lysandra nods grimly, her mind racing. The transformation of Viridius Prime is more than just a physical metamorphosis. It's an invasion that permeates the very essence of everything it touches. Stay with me, Mira. We're getting out of this. Lysandra reassures her, but the hollowness in her own voice betrays her uncertainty. As night descends, a sense of isolation envelops Lysandra. Her comrades, once a source of strength, now seem distant, their faces shadowed and unfamiliar under the dim light of the trench lamps. The laughter and camaraderie of the past feel like distant memories, replaced by a growing chasm of alienation. Alone with her thoughts, Guardsman Lysandra contemplates the daunting path ahead. The conflict has evolved into a struggle to maintain their humanity against an enemy that devours everything, their land, their bodies, their minds. Lysandra's thoughts drift to Tira, Kale Harlan and the others lost or transformed beyond recognition. Each memory cuts like a blade, a reminder of the war's relentless cruelty. The once clear line between human and alien blurs, leaving Lysandra adrift in a sea of uncertainty. A sudden movement in the shadows jolts Lysandra back to the present. She grips her weapon tightly, her eyes scanning the darkness. The familiar shapes of her squad are barely discernible, their forms distorted by the shifting terrain. As she prepares for rest, her mind haunted by the day's grim realizations, Lysandra's final conscious thought acknowledges the profound toll of this war. It's a conflict not only against the Tyranids, but against the very essence of Viridius Prime, a world she fears is irrevocably lost to the encroaching hive. Chapter 8 The Whispering Changes Guardsman Lysandra treads cautiously through the labyrinthine trenches of Viridius Prime, her hazel eyes scanning the shadows. The rustling of alien leaves and the subtle skittering in the dark are alarmingly clear to her enhanced senses. Each sound, each movement holds a potential threat, a hidden adversary, the planet, a grotesque tapestry of war and alien invasion, pulses with a life of its own, a life both beautiful and terrifying. Pausing by a cluster of bizarre flora, Lysandra's gaze lingers on their intricate patterns. These plants, unlike anything from her homeworld, are captivating in their alien strangeness. The petals shimmer with an iridescent glow, veins pulsating gently as if breathing. Lysandra reaches out, her fingers hovering just above the surface, feeling a strange pull, a connection that both intrigues and unsettles her. Something on your mind, Sarge? Corporal Jackson's voice cuts through her reverie. He and Trooper Mira watch her with concern. Lysandra withdraws her hand, masking her fascination. Just assessing the terrain. Lysandra replies, her voice steady. Jackson nods, but his eyes filled with unspoken questions linger on her. In the solitude of her quarters, Lysandra examines her reflection in a shard of polished metal. Her external appearance is unchanged, but there's something different, a feeling, an internal shift that defies explanation. Her skin seems too smooth, too perfect, as if subtly altered by an unseen hand. She probes her face, searching for tangible signs of transformation, but finds none. That night, as Lysandra lies in her bunk, the silence is broken by whispers, faint and indecipherable. They ebb and flow like a distant tide, a language unknown yet eerily familiar. She tries to dismiss them as echoes of her mind, but they persist, insistent and invasive. Her newfound clarity in the darkness is both a boon and a curse. 
As she navigates the trenches, her vision pierces the night, revealing figures and movements hidden to others. This heightened awareness isolates her from her comrades, setting her apart in a world that grows increasingly alien. Around the campfire, Lysandra's mind drifts from the conversations. Her comrades' laughter and banter sound distant, their faces blurred and indistinct. She feels a growing chasm between them, an isolation that she cannot bridge. An internal struggle rages within her. Lysandra senses a battle for her very soul, torn between her human identity and an otherworldly influence. It's a conflict that unfolds in the deepest recesses of her being, unseen yet palpable. Her sleep is disturbed by vivid, unsettling dreams. She envisions sprawling organic structures, their roots entwining with her flesh. The sensation of being drawn into the earth, becoming one with Viridius Prime, leaves her waking in cold sweat. Lysandra stands alone, a solitary figure against the backdrop of a world transformed. The whispers continue, a constant undercurrent in her mind, hinting at the profound changes taking root within her. The lines between human and alien blur, leaving her standing on the brink of an abyss, one that threatens to consume not just her body but her very essence. Dawn breaks over the trenches of Viridius Prime, casting an eerie light on the war-ravaged landscape. Sergeant Lysandra, leader of the 113th Caledon Rangers, strides through the muddy trenches, her boots sinking into the soft, alien-infused earth. The air is thick with the scent of decay and the distant echoes of alien shrieks. Each step Lysandra takes is heavy, not just with the weight of her gear, but with the burden of command and the loss of so many under her lead. As the first rays of sunlight filter through the spore-laden atmosphere, Lysandra's patrol brings her face to face with an unsettling sight. A small creature, unmistakably tyrannid in origin, blocks her path. Its kittenous skin glistens in the dawn light, and its many-faceted eyes lock onto Lysandra's. There is no immediate aggression from the creature, only a strange, silent acknowledgement, a fleeting connection that sends a shiver down Lysandra's spine. She feels an inexplicable sense of familiarity, as if recognizing a part of herself within this alien being. The moment passes, and the creature scuttles away, disappearing into the twisted undergrowth. Lysandra shakes off the eerie sensation, but the encounter leaves a lingering sense of unease. She can't help but wonder about the changes occurring within her, the subtle alterations in her perception and instincts. The thought is quickly pushed aside as duty calls. Later, during a skirmish against a Tyranid scouting party, Lysandra's combat skills are put to the test. Her movements are fluid, almost unnatural in their precision and speed. She moves through the battlefield with an eerie grace, her laser gun firing in perfect rhythm with her steps. The members of her squad watch in awe and slight unease. Lysandra's combat style, while effective, is unlike anything they've seen before. It's as if she's tapping into some newfound instinctual knowledge. The battle is brutal and swift, with Lysandra leading her squad with a ferocity that borders on the primal. The Tyranids fall one after another, their alien blood staining the earth. As the smoke clears and the last of the enemy is dispatched, Lysandra stands amidst the carnage, her breathing heavy. She looks down at the strewn Tyranid corpses, a profound realization dawning upon her. She feels a deep, almost spiritual connection with the Tyranid essence that now permeates the very soil of Viridius Prime. Guardsman Lysandra is profoundly altered, both mentally and physically, by her experiences on the front lines of Viridius Prime. The eerie, alien whispers that have begun to permeate her consciousness are not merely figments of her imagination, but harbingers of a deep, irrevocable transformation. A once familiar world, both externally and within the confines of her own mind, has begun to shift into something unrecognizable. In the waning moments, Lysandra finds herself increasingly drawn to the alien flora that has overrun the trenches and battlefields of Viridius Prime. The plants, with their iridescent hues and pulsating life, seem to speak to something primal within her. A part of her being that she cannot understand or control, this fascination with the alien, this pull towards the other, marks a significant departure from the soldier she once was, a soldier of the Imperium, sworn to eradicate such Xenos threats. It is during a routine check of the trenches structure, in the dense fog of an early dawn, where she finds herself halted by an inexplicable sense of recognition. A creature, small and seemingly benign, stares at her that reflect not aggression, but a mirror to Lysandra's soul. In this moment, a silent communication passes between them, a recognition of shared essence that chills Lysandra to her core. Shaken by the encounter, 
Lysandra attempts to rejoin her squad, but the alien whispers in her mind grow louder, more insistent. They guide her movements, sharpen her senses, and imbue her with a predatory efficiency that feels both exhilarating and terrifying. Her comrades notice the change, their admiration for her prowess tinged with an undercurrent of fear. Lysandra herself begins to feel a disconcerting detachment from her fellow guardsmen, as if she is observing them from a great distance. The chasm between Lysandra and her humanity widens during a night assault on a Tyranid nest. As she moves through the battlefield, her actions are not her own, but those of the hive mind. She fights with a brutality and grace that is alien to her, each kill bringing a rush of exhilaration and a deepening sense of loss. The battlefield becomes a blur, a symphony of violence that resonates with the Tyranid song in her head. When the battle is over, Lysandra stands alone amidst the carnage, her uniform stained with blood, both human and Xenos. The realization that she can no longer distinguish between the two marks a turning point in her transformation. In the aftermath of the battle, as the first light of dawn breaks over the horizon, Lysandra's isolation becomes complete. She can no longer deny the changes within her, the tyrannid essence that has begun to overwrite her humanity. The whispers in her mind offer comfort, a promise of belonging and strength but at the cost of her soul. As she looks out over the battlefield, now quiet and still, she understands that she stands at a threshold. Behind her lies her humanity, fragile and fraught with weakness. Ahead lies the abyss of the Tyranid hive mind, infinite and all-consuming. Lysandra, once a defender of the Imperium, has become something else, something alien. The battlefield of Viridius Prime, with its twisted landscapes and the ever-present threat of the Tyranid swarm, mirrors the war raging within her. As she steps into the dawn of a new day, it is clear that the Lysandra, who once fought for humanity, is gone, replaced by a being at war with itself. The planet, transformed by the Tyranid invasion, reflects the transformation within Lysandra. She moves through the trenches with a sense of purpose that is not entirely her own, drawn to the pulsating life of the Tyranid flora that now dominates the landscape. The beauty of the alien world fascinates her, a stark contrast to the horror it represents to the Imperium. Chapter 9 The Warped Battlefield The dawn at Viridius Prime unveils a world transformed into a nightmarish landscape, unrecognizable to those who once called it home. As the first light pierces the thick veil of Tyranid spores swirling in the sky, it illuminates a desolation wrought by unrelenting alien invasion. The vibrant ecosystems and bustling outposts that once marked the planet's surface are now but distant memories, supplanted by a vast, silent testament to the Tyranids' consuming wrath. Lysandra, a figure of solitary defiance in this apocalyptic setting, moves with purpose through the trenches that scar the planet's flesh. These trenches, once bustling arteries of human resistance and ingenuity, now throb with an otherworldly life. Alien flora, feeding on the detritus of war, line the walls, pulsating subtly as if breathing in the toxic air, a sinister integration of Tyranid biology into the very structure of the planet's defenses. The eerie quiet of the dawn is occasionally shattered by the distant, unsettling calls of Tyranid creatures, sounds that are alien, yet disturbingly familiar to Lysandra. With each haunting cry, her connection to the Tyranid hive mind deepens, a bond forged not just in the heat of battle, but in the shared essence of this transformed world. The air, heavy with the promise of impending doom, seems to press against her, a constant reminder of the encroaching hive. As Lysandra navigates the labyrinthine network of trenches, her movements betray a blend of human caution and something else, a newfound fluidity that speaks of her increasing alignment with the Tyranid invaders. Each step is measured, each glance reveals not just a soldier's vigilance, but a deeper, more intrinsic understanding of her surroundings. The environment, once an obstacle to be navigated and overcome, now offers a bizarre sense of accommodation, its alien architecture resonating with the changes brewing within her. As the planet awakens to another day under siege, Lysandra stands at the precipice of her own humanity, gazing into the abyss. In the heart of Viridius Prime's desolation, Lysandra treads a path lined with the paradoxes of war and transformation. Each step is a testament to the alien kinship blossoming within her, a connection to the Tyranid horde that infests her very essence. This world, now a shadow of its former self, mirrors the metamorphosis unfolding within her, an unsettling harmony between soldier and swarm. Lysandra's newfound affinity with the alien environment is profound, unsettlingly deep. The once distinct rhythm of her human heart 
now beats in sync with the pulsating life of Viridius Prime, a planet reborn in the image of the Tyranid Hive. This kinship, unfathomable to her past self, has become an irrefutable aspect of her existence, a bridge between the human and the utterly alien. The transformation manifests visibly upon her skin, which now bears the subtle, intricate patterns reminiscent of chitinous armor. Her eyes, once a clear reflection of her humanity, now glint with a predatory sheen, a mirror to the soul of the beast within. These changes, harbingers of her evolving identity, instill in her not horror but a profound sense of inevitability and belonging. Her human form, it seems, was but a chrysalis, destined to shed and reveal the true entity she was meant to become. The metamorphosis extends beyond the physical, warping her thoughts and perceptions. Strategic considerations, once purely human, now entwine with alien concepts and strategies. She finds herself pondering the hive mind's perspective with unsettling clarity, understanding its desires and objectives as if they were her own. This cognitive shift, bridging the gap between human soldier and tyranid organism, signals a profound alteration in her being. Lysandra's acceptance of her fate is not marked by despair, but by a grim resolution. She recognizes the inevitability of her transformation, understanding that resistance is not just futile, but contrary to the new truth she perceives. In this acceptance, she finds not peace, but a purpose reshaped by the Terranid will, marking a pivotal moment in her journey from humanity to something wholly other. Through her eyes, the invasion of Viridius Prime is no longer a tale of resistance, but one of inevitable assimilation, a grim reminder of the Tyranid's power to reshape not just worlds, but the very essence of those who stand against them. The dawn breaks over Viridius Prime, revealing a landscape forever altered by the Tyranid invasion. The sky, a canvas of chaos, swirls with spores that blanket the planet in a suffocating embrace. Below, Lysandra moves through the trenches, her presence a stark contrast to the desolation around her. These once symbols of human resistance now serve as a testament to the Tyranids' insidious spread, their walls alive with alien flora, feeding off the remnants of war. The silence of the early morning is shattered by the abrupt echo of gunfire. Lysandra's reaction is immediate, her body honing in on the source with a precision that belies her human origins. Her senses, now intertwined with the Tyranid hive mind, guide her actions, allowing her to respond with a deadly accuracy that is both her legacy and her curse. As Lysandra confronts the shadows emerging from the mist, her perception is caught in a horrifying limbo between reality and nightmare. The figures before her flicker, oscillating between the familiar forms of Imperial Guardsmen and the grotesque silhouettes of Tyranid warriors. With each figure she fells, a creeping dread takes hold the lines between friend and foe blurring in her vision. The conflict intensifies, the trenches becoming a labyrinth of death shrouded in fog. Lysandra moves through this hellscape like a phantom, her actions guided by instincts that are no longer her own. The fog, a physical barrier that obscures her vision, is also a metaphor for the confusion that clouds her mind, a reflection of her descent into a reality shaped by the Tyranid's influence. As abruptly as it began, the conflict ceases, leaving Lysandra standing amidst the silence of the aftermath. Her breathing is heavy, a testament to the exertion and the adrenaline that courses through her veins. Yet, as the adrenaline fades, she is left with a haunting solitude, surrounded by the carnage of a battle that leaves her questioning the nature of her enemies. In this moment of stillness, Lysandra stands at the precipice of understanding, her mind a battleground between her fading humanity and the alien consciousness that seeks to claim her. The dawn's light, filtering through the spores in the air, casts long shadows across the trenches, a visual metaphor for the darkness that encroaches upon her soul. In the ashen hues of dawn, Lysandra wanders through the remnants of the battlefield, her gaze drifting across a landscape marred by violence. The muted light unveils a tableau of devastation, bodies scattered in a grotesque mimicry of rest. Each step Lysandra takes is heavy, burdened with the duality of her existence and the actions she has wrought. Their silence is deafening, punctuated only by Lysandra's solitary footsteps. She moves among the fallen, her heart a void of emotion, her mind a maelstrom of tyrannid whispers and fading human thoughts. The sight of a familiar insignia on a soldier's uniform pierces the fog of her, alienated consciousness, igniting a fleeting spark of recognition and horror. But this spark is swiftly smothered by the cold logic of the hive mind, rationalizing the slaughter as a necessary culling. A shiver of clarity cuts through the haze of war, 
as Lysandra stumbles upon a soldier's uniform, mistaking it for Tyranid chitin in the dim light. The error sends a jolt through her, a reminder of the humanity she's slipping away from. Yet this moment of recognition is fleeting, quickly obscured by the creeping influence of the Tyranid consciousness within her. The trenches, once a symbol of human defiance, now feel like a chasm widening between Lysandra and her humanity. She senses the alienation not just in the physical distance from her comrades, but in the existential divide that has formed. The Tyranid presence within her grows stronger, drowning out the remnants of human connection, pulling her further into the embrace of the hive. The discovery of the soldier's uniform, its fabric soaked in the blood of battle, becomes a symbol of Lysandra's final severance from humanity. She stands on the brink, gazing into the abyss of her transformation. The uniform, once a mark of identity and belonging, now represents the past she can no longer claim as her own. As Lysandra continues her solitary march, the world around her takes on a sinister beauty. The alien flora, thriving in the blood-soaked soil, seems to whisper secrets in a language her tyranid-infused mind understands. Each step further into the trenches is a step deeper into her transformation, the landscape a reflection of her inner turmoil and change. Encounters with survivors become a treacherous dance of perception and reality. Friends and foes meld into indistinguishable shadows in Lysandra's altered vision, leading to confrontations that end in tragedy. These encounters only serve to deepen her isolation, severing the fragile threads of camaraderie that tether her to her fading humanity. A shard of metal, discarded in the mud, catches Lysandra's eye. Its surface, though marred and scratched, reflects back an image she scarcely recognizes. The face staring back at her is a hybrid of human and tyranid, the physical manifestation of her internal conflict. This reflection cements her fate, a monstrous visage that marks the point of no return. In this twisted reality, Lysandra finds herself caught between two worlds, belonging to neither. The battlefield, with its chorus of tyranid calls and the silent screams of the dead, becomes a mirror of her soul, torn, transformed, and irrevocably changed. As twilights embrace titans around Viridius Prime, the transformation within Lysandra reaches its zenith. No longer the guardsman her squad once followed, she is a creature born of nightmarish alchemy, a fusion of human resolve and tyranid ferocity. Her senses, now a conduit for the hive mind's will, paint the remnants of her squad not as comrades but as silhouettes of the enemy within the obscuring mist. Lysandra's approach is silent, her presence a shadow that moves with unnatural grace through the trenches. The world around her pulses with the life of the hive, each beat guiding her towards the remnants of her squad. They are unaware of her transformation, unable to see the predator lurking in their midst. She is the hunter, they the prey, caught in a dance as old as life itself. With no warning but the whisper of her movements, Lysandra strikes. The trenches explode into chaos, gunfire echoing against the walls as her former allies scramble to meet this new threat. But Lysandra is not the guardsman they remember. She is something else entirely. Her laser gun, an extension of her will, sings a dirge of death, its bolts cutting through the fog with lethal precision. To her squad, it is a tyrannid ambush, a horror sprung from the mist to devour them. The conflict is a blur, a series of moments stitched together by fear and confusion. Lysandra moves among her squad with a speed and brutality that is beyond human, her actions guided by the cold, calculating will of the tyrannid hive. Her squadmates, caught in the disorienting maelstrom, can scarcely comprehend what they face. One by one they fall, torn apart by a force that wears the face of their sergeant, but is driven by the alien hunger of the Tyranids. As the gunfire fades, silence descends upon the trenches once more. The aftermath is a grotesque tableau of carnage, illuminated by the dim light of a failing laser gun. The bodies of her squad lie scattered, a testament to Lysandra's deadly efficiency. It is a scene of unspeakable brutality, the physical remains bearing silent witness to the horror of her betrayal. In this moment of grim victory, Lysandra stands alone amidst the devastation she has wrought. There is no triumph here, only the stark realization of what she has become, a creature of the hive, far removed from the humanity she once embodied. The blood on her hands and the silence of the dead speak to a truth she can no longer deny. She is no longer the protector she once was, but the very horror she was sworn to fight. The transformation is complete, and with it, the final severing of any ties to her past life. Lysandra, the human soldier, is no more, leaving only the tyrannid creature to stalk the battlefield in search of its next prey. In the aftermath of the ambush, 
as the trenches of Viridius Prime lay shrouded in the gloom of twilight, a scene of profound betrayal unfolds. Trooper Nera and Corporal Jackson, the remnants of a squad once bound by camaraderie and duty, find themselves ensnared in a nightmare woven by one of their own. Nerissa, her uniform torn and stained with the crimson of her blood, locks eyes with Jackson. Both are immobilized, not just by their wounds, but by a disbelief so profound it borders on paralysis. The carnage around them, a macabre testament to the battle just fought, forces a single haunting question. To the forefront of their minds, how could Lysandra, their leader, their protector, morph into the harbinger of their doom? Yet, in the depths of their shock, a desperate hope flickers. Perhaps Lysandra was their savior, battling an unseen tyrannid threat in the mist. Lysandra's approach, measured and deliberate, belies the storm of alien hunger raging within her. To Naira and Jackson, she appears as a beacon of hope, the stalwart survivor who turned the tide of the ambush. Naira, despite the agony racking her body, offers Lysandra a smile. A smile born of relief and trust, a silent thank you to the comrade she believes has saved them. But the truth lurking in Lysandra's gaze, a chilling blend of malice and anticipation, remains unseen by the wounded troopers, obscured by their faith in the humanity they remember. As Lysandra kneels beside Naira, her hands extend not in comfort, but as instruments of a far more sinister intent. The coldness of her touch, the alien sharpness of her fingers, shatters the illusion of salvation. Naira's smile, a fragile thing, dissolves into a visage of confusion and then terror, as the reality of her fate becomes inescapably clear. Lysandra's aid is nothing more than a facade, a cruel mimicry of mercy designed to conceal the execution she administers, a silent, calculated act of violence that belies any semblance of the sergeant they once knew. In this moment, the grotesque transformation of Lysandra is laid bare, not through the physical alterations that have claimed her body, but through the betrayal of those who once called her sister-in-arms. The horror of Naira's realization, the finality of her silent scream, echoes through the trenches a stark and haunting testament to the depth of Lysandra's fall from grace. In the eerie quiet that follows Naira's demise, Jackson is ensnared in a state of petrified disbelief. His body, rendered immobile by his injuries, betrays him, leaving his mind to grapple with the unfolding horror. Initially, he perceives Lysandra's actions as a grim form of compassion, a mercy, killing to spare Naira from the agony of her wounds. But as Naira's struggles fade into stillness, the horrifying truth crystallizes within him. Lysandra, once their guardian, has donned the mantle of executioner. Jackson's gaze, filled with a mix of horror and disbelief, follows Lysandra as she rises. His throat tightens a silent scream that finds no voice. His mind races, desperate to reconcile the sergeant he respected with the creature she has become. Lysandra, why? He manages to whisper, his voice barely a breath against the cold air of the trench. Lysandra turns to face Jackson, her eyes devoid of the warmth they once held. Jackson... She begins, her voice a ghostly reflection of the commander he once knew. In the grand tapestry of the cosmos, our struggles, our pain, are but fleeting shadows. The Hive offers release from this endless cycle of war and suffering. In their embrace, there is no fear, no pain, only unity. Jackson's heart pounds against his chest, a futile protest against the inevitability of his fate. But at what cost, Lysandra? At the cost of our humanity? He counters, his voice gaining strength from a well of desperation. Lysandra's expression remains impassive, her next words chilling in their detachment. Humanity is a transient state, Jackson. Evolution is the only constant in an ever-changing universe. To resist is to suffer. I offer you peace and end to the struggle. As Lysandra approaches, Jackson's attempts to recoil are hindered by his injuries. The realization that he is about to share Nera's fate ignites a primal fear within him, yet he finds himself transfixed by the transformation Lysandra has undergone. Her once familiar features are now marred by the grotesque beauty of the Tyranid's influence. Her hand reaches for him, and in that moment, Jackson understands the true horror of the Tyranid's promise. I'm sorry, Lysandra, I can't. I won't become a part of that horror, he stammers, his voice a mix of defiance and resignation. Lysandra's touch is cold alien as she whispers, Sleep now, warrior. Your battle is over. Her words are meant to comfort, but they carry the weight of a final judgment. As darkness envelops him, Jackson's last thoughts are not of fear, but of sorrow for the friend he once knew, 
now lost to the hive's insidious call. His final breath is a silent plea for forgiveness, not for himself, but for Lysandra trapped in a nightmare of her own making. In the dim twilight of Viridius Prime, Lysandra stands as a solitary figure amidst the desolation of the trench. The bodies of her squad, once comrades in arms, now lie strewn around her, silent testament to a horror wrought by her own hands. The air is thick, not with victory but with the stench of death and the heavy silence of extinction. Her gaze drifts downwards, settling on her hands. These hands, once human, now serve as instruments of a will not her own. The chitinous patterns that mark her skin seem to pulse with an alien life, a grotesque reminder of the transformation that has consumed her. Each drop of blood, each mark of violence, tells a story not of triumph but of tragic metamorphosis. Lysandra's heart, if it still beats with human emotion, aches with a profound sense of loss. The pang of sorrow for the person she once was, a soldier of the Imperium, a protector of humanity, is a fleeting shadow, quickly consumed by the overwhelming presence of the hive mind. Yet in this moment of solitude, the gravity of her actions bears down upon her. The realization that she has not only severed her ties to humanity, but has actively participated in its destruction, is a burden too heavy to bear. Around her, the trench is a macabre gallery of the fallen. Each body, each face frozen in a grimace of fear or agony, is a mirror reflecting the monster she has become. The silence is oppressive, punctuated only by the distant, discordant symphony of the tyrannic swamp, a constant reminder of the inescapable bond she now shares with the alien hive. Lysandra lifts her gaze to the darkening skies, where the swirling tyranid spores dance like macabre snowflakes in a storm of unfathomable purpose. As the light fades, so too does any lingering semblance of her former self. She is the sole survivor, not by the virtue of her strength or cunning, but as the final witness to a chapter of unspeakable atrocity. In this desolate trench, surrounded by the grotesque tableau of her making, Lysandra embodies the ultimate horror of the Tyranid threat, not merely the physical annihilation they bring, but the existential terror of becoming the very monster one swore to destroy. Her story, a chilling saga of transformation and betrayal, is etched into the flesh of Viridius Prime, a grim reminder of the Tyranid's insidious power to corrupt and consume. As the darkness envelops her, Lysandra's figure becomes indistinguishable from the shadows that creep along the trench walls. She is a ghost, a spectre of war, forever trapped in the twilight between worlds, one human, one tyranid, haunted by the echoes of a humanity lost to the endless hunger of the hive. In the dim twilight that now blankets Viridius Prime, Lysandra enacts a ritual of terrifying transformation. With hands reshaped into instruments of the hive's will, she delves into the earth, her actions guided by a primal urge unknown to her past human self. Each movement is deliberate, each burial an act of macabre assimilation, as she plants the bodies of her former comrades like grotesque seeds destined to nourish the alien flora. The trenches, once a maze of human resilience, become the site of a chilling transformation. Lysandra, moving with a purpose that transcends her lost humanity, rips open the soil to deposit the fallen. These acts, once unthinkable, now flow from her as naturally as breathing, driven by an alien instinct to integrate her squad into the Tyranid ecosystem. As she works, the remnants of who Lysandra once was evaporate into the cold Viridius night. Her actions are no longer her own, but those of the hive mind, consuming and repurposing with ruthless efficiency. The burial of her squadmates beneath the Tyranid corrupted soil serves as a grim testament to the erasure of her humanity, a final merging of human and alien destinies. Upon completing her grim task, Lysandra stands among the nascent garden of grotesque alien flora. Her voice, once human, now joins the discordant chorus of the Tyranid Swarm, performing a ritual that seals her fate. This act is not just a surrender, but a proclamation of her new existence within the collective consciousness of the Hive. As the tale of her transformation spreads, Lysandra becomes a legend, a dark symbol of the Tyranid threat's ultimate horror. Her story, murmured in hushed tones among the ranks of the Imperial Guard, serves as a cautionary tale. It speaks of the war's power not just to kill, but to corrupt turning protectors into the very monsters they fought against. In this new reality, Lysandra embodies the war's deepest terror, the loss of self to an unrelenting alien hunger. Her existence, once marked by camaraderie and human resilience, is now a testament to the Tyranid's insidious strength. Her story, etched in the annals of imperial history, 
stands as a stark reminder of the conflict's true cost, not the loss of life, but the erasure of identity, the transformation of the defender into the devourer. As Viridius Prime falls deeper into the shadow of the Tyranid threat, Lysandra's legacy is not one of heroism, but a cautionary emblem of the war's darkest potential. To transform, to corrupt, and ultimately, to consume. In the end, her story is a macabre ballet of horror and transformation, a disturbing and brutal testament to the Tyranids' relentless advance and the fragile nature of humanity in the vast, indifferent cosmos. As the dust of war settles over the desecrated landscape of Viridius Prime, the tale of Lysandra, once a stalwart defender of humanity, now serves as a chilling epilogue to the Tyranid invasion. Her transformation, a stark emblem of the Tyranid's horrific assimilative power, unveils a cosmic horror far beyond the comprehension of those she once stood beside. The annihilation of her individuality, swallowed by the insatiable maw of the hive mind, mirrors the broader existential dread that pervades the galaxy's war-torn frontiers. In the silence that follows the storm of conflict, Lysandra's fate encapsulates the profound terror at the heart of the war against the Tyranids. Her metamorphosis from guardian to grotesque herald of the swarm underscores a grim reality. The true horror of the Tyranid threat lies not in the physical devastation they wreak, but in their ability to erase the very essence of what it means to be human. Lysandra's story, echoing through the shattered remains of Imperial defenses, becomes a parable of unending conflict. It highlights the Tyranids' existential threat, a darkness that does not merely kill, but consumes identity, leaving behind nothing but a hollow echo of what once was. This narrative serves as a stark reminder of the eternal vigilance required to hold back the night, a fight not just for survival, but for the soul of humanity itself. In the aftermath, Lysandra's transformation stands as a dark beacon, illuminating the Tyranids' ultimate victory not as a conquest of territory, but as an assimilation of beings. Her legacy, whispered in the dark corners of the Imperium, is a harrowing testament to the war's stakes, echoing the relentless hunger of the swarm and the indifferent vastness of the cosmos. The story of Viridius Prime and its fallen defender will linger long in the memory that haunts the survivors, a somber meditation on the price of survival in a universe that remains as ever, indifferent to the struggles of its inhabitants and a perpetual reminder of the fragility of human existence in the face of an all-consuming alien will. Alright, and that was the Flesh Garden Part 3. I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, listening to it, watching it, I guess. I enjoyed writing it, kind of. I, I wrote this story in all of its parts probably a month and a half ago, and then I've been, and then I released the first part and the second part, and then I've been not releasing the third part because I had to, I basically had to rewrite the entire ninth and tenth chapter, and I just really wasn't really feeling the story anymore. I wanted to write other things, and I did. That's when I wrote the Plague Rock Clash, and so I finally, you know, decided to finish this story in its, in all of its parts. Um, I had to write chapter nine. Um, I wrote, I had my initial one, which I reread, and it was garbage, so I wrote it again by trying to incorporate stuff still from chapter nine and I hated that one too and then I finally wrote this one and I'm not super happy with it but it you know it's I, it, it, it's okay it's not great but it's okay there's a few issues things happen kind of quickly um, also if it feels like there's a chapter missing that's because there is um, I basically put the tenth chapter and the ninth chapter together and I removed um, sorry, what? I removed the ninth chapter, um, and just had the tenth one, because when I, when I had it, the ninth chapter was very much just, like, the same as the eighth chapter, and a little bit of the seventh chapter, so I decided to get rid of it, but that's why things kind of happen a little quickly, um, a little too quick for my liking, honestly, but I really wanted to release this, and you can only work on things for so long, and 
and I don't want to work on this story anymore, so I just had to, I just had to release it. Um, so I'm gonna release the uh, like the full complete version. Of it's gonna be two and a half hours long, uh, or something like that, or something crazy. And I think, I think, listening it from start to finish, I don't think that it'll feel Lysandra's, Lysandra's like turning point to the Tyranid mind. Um, I mind. I, I don't think it'll be so jarring. I think it'll be like you'll be able to see it coming a little bit more. Because in this in this part, you only you only got one chapter of you know Lysandra being Lysandra, and then the next two she was full tear in it basically. I mean, the eighth chapter was literally there to to uh, show that that she's turning into a tear in it. Right. That was the whole point. Okay, I'm talking a lot now. I tend to do that. Um, I'll save all this for the commentary. Um, thank you so much for listening. If you did enjoy it, like, comment, subscribe. That would be super cool. The next story is going to be of a... of a uh, about a crew in a Baneblade, a part of a Steel Fury company. Two of them. Um, there's going to be a lot of characters in it. It's They're going to be a part of... Uh, anti-tank, uh, anti-titan hunting group, I guess, battle group, I don't know, they're called Steel Fury Companies, but there's two of them, which is, usually doesn't happen, but I don't care, I'm ready, um, and that's going to be the next one, and I'm excited for that, so if you like what you heard here, uh, stay tuned for that, thank you so much for listening, thank you for the support, thank you for your patience, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. people are gone and it's just us let's get into some commentary and the background is going to be my homie's music again link is in the description but you'll be hearing it like right now probably and all the images that you see again are the the various images from uh, the dolly 3 generated some you've seen some you have let's get into it so i'm going to be honest i I think I already said most of what I wanted to say earlier, which I need to get out of the habit of doing. But uh, what I will say is that this story, I wrote it a while ago, right? And it's, it's good. I mean, it's, yeah, I like it, you know? It has its fault, it has problems. Things happen too quickly, especially here. Um, I use, I, I noticed that I used the word testament like a lot. So I gotta watch out for repetitive words and things like that, because I was listening to it the other day and it was just kind of annoying, because I kept hearing testament. It's a testament to this, there a testament to that, a testament to there. It just sounds stupid. Uh, I also think I, the, the point of the story wasn't the characters. So I didn't really put a lot of emphasis on the characters. You didn't really have to, all you really had to remember was Lysandra and maybe Jackson, like, but mainly it's just Lysandra. Uh, it's it's just her and then the uh, Tyranid fauna, you know, and that, that, that was kind of the main thing. I didn't want the Tyranids directly to be like the Tyranid organisms like themselves to be the enemy. I wanted them to be a threat, obviously, but more in the background, right? Um, and like the lingering threat, the, the, the real threat, right? was always and has always been the uh, the transformation of Viridian Prime, right? Viridius Prime, right? The, the, the transformation of all of its little tiny organisms to all of its big organisms, the air, right? The literal air they breathe, right? The, the food, right, had organisms in it, right? I'm talking like, you know, substantial size, but then also micro, right? 
all the worms in the soil, everything like that, all the maggots, all the flies, all of the, all of them, tyranid, right? Spreading some type of infection. Because I always thought like, is there so much you could do with the tyranids? Because they're just a evolution, like evolutionary, whatever, like powerhouse, right? They can basically evolve from anything into anything. So I never really understood why Warhammer writers, I don't think, don't get me wrong, I don't think I did the greatest job here in portraying it, but, um, and someone much better than me could probably flesh it out, you know, better, but, but I never understood why 40k writers and stuff, it, it, it was always like the, the overwhelmingness of the Tyranids, which I get, that's an aspect of them for sure, but what about the infections, right, that they cause? What about, like, when a soldier gets wounded, right, let's just say he gets like a a good sized gash just on his arm just by like accidentally scraping a rusty covered in dirt um piece of metal jutting out of like the trench right well that jutting piece of metal probably has tyranid organisms crawling over it like crawling all over it right especially if it's covered in dirt it's gonna have even even more microorganisms or anything like that or maybe there's a bigger one in there and immediately right when he gets that wound it would infect it right and i haven't really seen that in a warhammer right uh a warhammer book or anything correct me if i'm wrong i haven't seen i guess a lot maybe no i have all right but like i've never seen a writer delve into that part of it right where where the infection has microorganisms in it and they're all tyranid right because the tyranids are consuming the planet and changing everything and then it gets in infected right by little tyranid organisms i i don't know what like because i know the only i know that my story is a little unrealistic in the lore right that's why at the end i kind of throw in like she's a legend right she's a legend of the she's like a story right so it's like you can if you weren't there which no one was because they're all dead she killed them all unfortunately um it, it's just like a it's like a it's like a story that people soldiers tell around the campfire about about the tyranids right like a like a like a scary story you know like oh this can happen to you type of thing because i know that it doesn't really happen like this in lore or i've never seen it happen like this in lore the only thing close enough to it would be a gene stealer and they do it by having sex with you and other means so I didn't really know I didn't want it to just be like oh with like an infection and then they get a contagion and then the most realistic thing would probably like the, if let's go with that example with that guy that getting gash in his arm he uh, most likely the microorganisms would probably turn into larger organisms right and larger and larger and larger until they're like maggot sized or like fly sized or something and then they would probably just burrow into the guy or the girl and just eat them from the inside out that's probably realistically what would happen the, the probably the the farthest thing that you could stretch is maybe you could have like a xenomorph type of thing where the the microorganisms like eat enough of him to form and then they meet together or something and they form like this other biomass and then that thing pops out of him right you can have that um but the 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 stretch that it fully consumes them and turns them into a tyranid plaything essentially is pretty far-fetched that's why again i tried to make it like it's a legend you know it's like it because it doesn't exactly go with the lore so the legend i feel like i'm that's that's what's trying to like save me that's what i'm trying to do to like save me from people saying that uh no this can't happen no this no that etc which they're not wrong but uh it's just a fun little story so it's just a legend just a story right that they tell them late at night what else i think it'll make more sense when you listen to it from start to finish it won't feel so like like the because i left clues obviously that you could easily pick up it's not like it's i tried to hide them or something i mean tried to make them subtle but they were definitely clues where like you know they were infecting they were getting in their water supply they were i overemphasized probably the the fauna getting infected and the and the 
and the and the dirt and stuff and the very soil that they walk in. I probably said that too many times too. But in front of that, I had to release it. Don't 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 hate me, okay? But yeah, I uh to say anymore. I mean, I mean yeah I do that's not true I definitely have a lot more to say but I kind of don't want to and it's going to take a while to export this then it's going to take a while to process it I mean for YouTube to process it and upload it so I kind of want to get it out there because it's been probably like two weeks or if not more that I've it's it's hard to write these stories so quickly especially when I got a job and got a you know I got family life and then relationship life and then friends and stuff and it's, it's tough, but I, I would like to do this full time. I really would. Hey, which reminds me, uh, I have a, I made a. You want to join it? I mean, I figure this is probably the best group. Whoever's listening to this, uh, especially at this point, you're probably the target audience. If you, I made a Discord. There's nobody in it, obviously, and I'm just gonna use it to like. You know, for writer's advice, if I need help or something, or people that just want to talk to me or want to know more about the story. Um, also have updates on, you know, what's going on, when things will be released, things like that. Um, ideally, people can start using it for like, you know, just general writing advice or tips or inspiration, or I'm also looking for inspiration, right? So it's kind of just a way for me to get some help from the community, get some feedback from the community, reach the community, etc. all that stuff. No one's in it at all. But if you would like to be the first one, the link is in the, the link is in the description. And I'll try and like, uh, you know, update it regularly and stuff. And I'll be posting AI images uh, in there and stuff. I'll be posting really brief rough drafts or like, you know just just a whole bunch of random stuff and hopefully the community will grow other people will post and etc um that's about it yep next story will be about a bane blade uh super heavy tank crew it'll there's 10 of them and then there's what one two Three, four, five, six. Then there's six other commanders of the uh, other Bane Blades and Doomhammer and the other one. I forget. And they will be. Uh, I'll be releasing that kind of soon, but it'll be fun. I'm excited to write it. I'm, I already have a couple ideas and everything. I've already been kind of writing it. I'm excited. But, um, yeah, and it'll be an anti-Titan story. Anti-Titan. Well anti-titan uh hunting group that's what they'll be a part of and that's what the story will focus on with kind of the looming massive planetary wide battle going on in the background it'll be fun all right that's about it thank you so much for listening double listening i guess whatever that means because you listen to the first one and then you listen to the second part so it's double listening all right rambling and I'm really just talking to myself. I know I'm talking to you, but like, I'm still just talking to myself in my room. I, I, I have to get used to it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed everything. Like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord. Hey, listen to my buddy's music if you liked it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.